containing medicine which can be also life saving but today we will mainly look at some of the molecules which can be prepared very easily by using our organic chemistry knowledge which we have acquired and read let us look at some of the most famous one all of us are familiar with paracetamol ibuprofen aspirin right naproxen ranitidine these are very simple organic molecules and these are prepared by using sometimes one step to up to six or seven step synthesis from readily available starting material as you all know ibuprofen is analgesic that essentially means that it is a painkiller right and also it is anti inflammatory we'll look at in a moment their synthesis paracetamol on the other hand is analgesic it's huge almost for every purpose you know every little bit pain there are people who use it quite a lot sometimes they end up abusing it so please do not use the medicine unless it is prescribed by doctor don't take over the counter medicine whenever you feel that something is wrong with you you can take any of these medicine or i would say no medicine one should take without prescription or without the need which is justified by the doctor aspirin once again heavily used i would say abused maybe to a greater extent it is an analgesic as well as anti inflammatory all these are available over the counter that means without prescription from doctor you can get but that doesn't mean that for every little cause or every little pain you should start using medicine it's a very bad habit which would usually lead to lesser potency in your body lesser drug resistance or lesser or lesser uh, disease resistance in your body so please do not once again take the medicine without prescription there is imipramine which is antidepressant again these are the medicine one should not take without consulting the doctor i think in india um, we we need to do better in terms of sale of the medicine sometimes a lot of medicines are available without proper proper uh, prescription which need to be stopped and all of us being educated we should try our best to tell people that consuming medicine without proper reason is something not desirable at all chloramphenicol it is an antimicrobial we'll see in a moment how one can apply this molecule quite interestingly naproxen which is in a said will also see how to prepare it very very simple finally we'll see the synthesis of ranitidine which is an antacid let's look at paracetamol synthesis first 
Once again, paracetamol is an analgesic, then painkiller basically. You take paracetamol quite often, I believe. It's one of the most used medicines. Synthesis is easier, I would say. You take the four amino phenols, which is one of the cheapest molecules you can get in organic laboratory. You react it with acetic anhydride to give paracetamol. One step synthesis, simplest synthesis, anyone, almost anyone should be able to synthesize without even knowledge of organic chemistry. One can synthesize this paracetamol. It can be prepared in metric ton scale. It has been prepared in huge scale in industry. Things are nice, simple. A synthesis which is easier or better than this is difficult to imagine. Of course, there are many different approaches one can think of, including the availability of the starting material, deal, how to deal with the side product if anything is forming. I think this method that is outlined here is unbeatable. This is the one which is used most often. Let us then look at our next molecule, which is aspirin. This is orthohydroxybenzoic acid, also known as salicylic acid, right? Now, the salicylic acid is, once again, one of the very cheap organic molecules you can find in any organic laboratory. It is not a surprise that, therefore, by using this salicylic acid, acetic anhydride treatment gives you aspirin. And this is the method which is used industrially. I would say there is no need really to look for an alternative method to prepare this molecule. It works beautifully. And uh, these reactions are quite powerful to prepare this simple drug that is aspirin. Aspirin is analgesic as well as anti-inflammatory. Let us look at this not so simple molecule, ibuprofen. Ibuprofen synthesis is known till since, I guess, 1960s. This is one of the heavily used molecules, as you know, ibuprofen, for its analgesic as well as anti-inflammatory role. Ibuprofen synthesis has been done by six steps in industry, starting from 1960s. This is the famous boot process. The starting material, although I am showing here isobutyl benzene, but you can prepare it from benzene, simple benzene. You can start with and do a friedel craft reaction, friedel craft friedel craft alkylation reaction you can do with benzene by using propylene. You take benzene, react it with propylene in presence of aluminum chloride to get the friedel craft alkylated product that is isobutyl benzene. Now, this is very cheap to prepare. What you do, next step is the Friedel Krupp acylation, Friedel Krupp alkylation followed by Friedel Krupp acylation. Once again, by using aluminum trichloride. You do this reaction, okay? Double Friedel Krupp reaction for the product with an alkyl as well as acyl. Subsequently, you react it with this ethyl chloroacetate in presence of a base sodium ethoxide. Right? So you deprotonate it and attack it on the ketone 
to get this epoxide intermediate. Which then one can hydrolyze to get this branched aldehyde. One can think of preparing this branch aldehyde by many other methods, such as if you have an olefin is there, branch hydroformylation one can do. Let's not get into the other possible routes by which you can synthesize this intermediate. This is, I think, quite a, quite an interesting, quite an interesting, uh, you know, method to prepare it. You prepare this intermediate by this method and no metal metal free so far and you then use this hydroxyl amine to give the aldoxine which upon treatment with acetic anhydride heating condition gives you the corresponding cyano intermediate so in the ibuprofen then we can synthesize this ibuprofen in the boot process by following this excellent procedure which is six steps and gives the product in excellent quality now if we are looking at so this so this ibuprofen can be synthesized from the three steps starting from simple benzene this is known as the boot process that is known since 1960s. It is a very effective process. Indeed, industrial preparation of ibuprofen started with boot process. But in the next slide, you will see a modified version of this where we find that ibuprofen can be synthesized only in three steps as opposed to the six steps that you have seen in the last slide once again here also we start with benzene the simplest possible starting material we take benzene and we do a friedel craft alkylation reaction with propylene to give isobutyl benzene just like in the last case this friedel craft alkylation is followed by friedel craft acylation where acyl chloride and aluminum trichloride is reacted with this isobutyl benzene to give this same double friedel craft alkylated acylated intermediate this is the same intermediate as in both process if we take this intermediate now in a little bit different sense where we see that this ketone is reduced to the hydroxyl by using hydrogen gas and palladium on charcoal it's a very effective method therefore although it's the metal mediated process industrially it is still viable and it has been followed subsequently with this secondary alcohol with 10% hcl and co gas in presence of palladium chloride this triphenyl phosphine complex it is oxidatively added co inserted and then hydrolysis gives you the ibuprofen directly this is quite amazing synthesis simple synthesis in three steps as opposed to the six steps as you have seen in the boot process this is quest process and it works beautifully industrially it has been used quite a lot now you have seen this analgesic or you know this ibuprofen which is used quite a lot in regular life it can be done by utilizing this simple methodology as you see in here. The basic difference between these two process has led to this Hoetz process, which is more 
important and it gives the product in useful yield despite having the metal mediated synthesis. Let us look at yet another powerful pharmaceuticals known as imipramine. It is antidepressant and it is used quite often. It is one of the best selling antidepressant for some time. Imipramine is synthesized from dibenzazepine. As you see, this tricyclic ring containing organic molecule, it is reacted with 3 dimethyl aminopropyl chloride. As you see on the right hand side, it's a simple nucleophilic substitution reaction gives you imipramine in right one step, it, in one step only, which is fantastic. Imipramine, which is an antidepressant, can be synthesized from these two reagents by using this 3 dimethyl aminopropyl chloride and NH2 to give this product. Now, here is yet another exciting drug molecule known as chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol synthesis is a marvel uh, in synthetic chemistry domain. It is started with a simple material such as this 4-nitroacetophenone. Chloramphenicol is a famous antimicrobial which is used quite a lot. As you can see in here, chloramphenicol has this CCL2 motif, CHCL2 motif, which is important. And this is a little bit complex molecule compared to what we have seen previously. The synthesis is straightforward, simple organic synthesis without any metal mediated process. We get this compound. So starting from this 4-nitroacetophenone, we have the bromination reaction, rather alpha bromination, alpha bromoacetophenone and the para position nitro group, which is simple, exciting. This alpha bromination happens, this activated CH bond get brominated and subsequently we have hexamine as well as HCl to do the amination reaction over here and you protect this amine with HCl. Subsequently, acetic anhydride treatment give you an acetyl intermediate to protect the amine and then reacting with formaldehyde gives you this alcohol, this primary alcohol via deprotonation of this carbon center and attacking on the formaldehyde gives you this primary alcohol. But if you deprotect this in acyl group, you will get the amino alcohol, which you see in here. So the deprotection of this in acetyl will give you amino alcohol that is required for the preparation of chloramphenicol. But before going that, you have to do the reduction of this ketone, right? So this ketone selective reduction in these cases, in presence of nitro, as you can see, you have a nitro moiety in there and you have a ketone. So selective reduction of this ketone can be done by this MPV reduction, which utilizes aluminum this isopropoxide intermediate uh, compound along with isopropyl alcohol, which is a sacrificial donor, hydrogen donor hydride donor actually. So this reduces, this is a mild, relatively mild reducing condition to give you the secondary alcohol. In presence of nitro, this reduction can be occurring to give you this intermediate from where if you deprotect this N-acetyl with in presence of HCl and chloroacetic uh, camphor sulfonic acid, um, you, you get this amino alcohol intermediate. From there on, it's just one more step, as you can see here with this, uh, with this simple uh, reagent, you can get the chloramphenicol synthesis. So just to come back again for this chloramphenicol synthesis, 
it is one two three four five six seven step seven step from a readily available starting material and the simplest possible starting material one can synthesize or one can complete the synthesis of chloramphenicol which is an antimicrobial you start with nitro acetophenone do the bromination convert it to amine protect the amine and then react it with formaldehyde and then you get this second uh, this primary alcohol and the keto group that you have over here selectively you need to reduce it in presence of the nitro group so you use mpv reduction procedure subsequently remove you remove the acetyl protection by acid hydrolysis with hcl and camphor sulfonic acid sub and then you install this final cocl2 motif to give you the chloramphenicol which is fantastic molecule if you look at for this sort of antimicrobial synthesis okay let us look at the next one next one is the naproxen synthesis it is again another beautiful demonstration of what synthetic chemist can achieve by simple organic chemistry beta naphthol is taken which is one of the cheapest and readily available starting material one can get for this naproxen synthesis you start with beta naphthol you brominate it of course monobromination is not easy to get it's always end up giving dibromination in the position at as is shown in here this dibromo of course we don't want one of this bromo that is in here this bromine is removed by nahso4 treatment to give you this monobrominated beta naphthol derivative protecting this hydroxo or since in the naproxen you have methoxy group so you install the methoxy group or you you protect the phenol with methyl group ome by using this ch3cl in presence of a base so you have bromo methoxy beta methoxy naphthalene right which is again quite useful or quite important intermediate from here treatment with magnesium and bromo uh, bromo magne bromo this uh, ethyl acetate um, you get this beautiful naproxen molecule which is in racemic form by using this n alkyl glucamine you can resolve it to get the s naproxen it is a nsid non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs which is quite popular and used widely in pharmaceutical world once again please do not consume the any of these any of these or any other medicine directly without doctors permissions or doctors advice this is the final molecule synthesis for today that is ranitidine ranitidine is an antacid it is used widely worldwide specifically in our country it has been used quite a lot um it is prepared only in three steps starting with furfuryl alcohol once again it's a very cheap starting material furfuryl alcohol reacting with with formaldehyde and dimethyl amine gives you these one five di substituted furan derivatives one five di substituted furan derivative and reacting this furan with this aminothiol you get further derived or advanced intermediate which is having a primary amine over there which is nucleophilic enough to attack on this carbon center to give you uh, the complete synthesis of ranitidine once again this is a simple reaction condensation a simple reaction in information and attack on the on the on the five position subsequently a, a 
a, a further intermediate synthesis to give you the ranitidine. Right this completes a very important medicine pharmaceuticals that is available over the counter um, and it gives you access to the preparation of this molecule in the shortest possible route. Only in three steps one can synthesize this molecule to, to give the desired pharmaceuticals. With this, I hope you would look for many more synthesis of the simple pharmaceuticals and will be happy to discuss in future regarding this. Thank you very much. See you later. Here is the reference for this work or any of these you can get from the internet as well. Here is, here is the reference for all these synthesis.